In this piece, we're going to look at the investigation tools. And the interesting part about this area is there's no specific functionality that they are designed to accomplish while you're scoring the rally. Uh, so there's going to be a little more imagination that goes into using them. I'm talking about this section that is right down here. So we have a couple of different ways that we can look at all of the data that we have. Let's start right at the top. So suspicious control times, this is looking at each of the times that we actually have recorded for each racer. So all the way down at the bottom, we do have a key of what kind of notes we can find, uh, zeros for times that are exactly zeros. Sometimes you just don't finish putting uh, a piece of data in before hitting enter. Uh, so midnight times, anything that is uh, between midnight and 1 a.m., most likely these are caused uh, by when you put in uh, a time of day that maybe is an elapsed stage time and doesn't include the hour at all. You're like, oh, they had 7 minutes and 37 seconds. Um, but you really want that to be like, you know, 2 o'clock and 7.37. Uh, e is for early times, anything before 7 a.m. Um, this sometimes happens uh, in the same kind of vein um, if you're putting in times and forget do, you're doing military. Um, but generally, you'll know if your rally has any times uh, that should be occurring uh, before 7. Uh, TT is for time travel. This is actually our most common piece that pops up. So right here we had uh, a time travel for this fellow. And up here we had time travel for almost everyone that came into this control. How does that happen? Uh, well, in this case, uh, this is the stage 1 start. So what happened is, uh, at the arrival these vehicles were waved in and given their correct time. Uh, so they were actually waved in early, but we recorded the time that they were supposed to be there. So then we started them. So in actuality, uh, this person was waved in given their uh, correct arrival time according to the rules several minutes in the future, um, and then uh, then went off. So you'll know if you, you know here, this entire control, this this happened. Uh, so you're like, oh, okay, and I know what happened there. Uh, down here, uh, a little more unusual. It, it's also the same kind of thing that, that can happen is people getting waved into controls. But you want to be able to to spot these and investigate to make sure that that is what happened, and that it, it's not a situation that uh, you know something needs to be fixed. So this is a good report to find. Just what do we have uh, that maybe needs a little more attention? So we can also look at suspicious stage times. So this is after we've done the calculations. Uh, so red for any times that are negative. And this sometimes happens if you have a time of day uh, that is, or a start time that has been put in in a way that's wrong. This is a cascading error from the other pieces. Uh, and blue is all times over 20 minutes. This 20 minutes is configurable uh, in our setup. Uh, so depending on the length of some of your stages, uh, you may want to set that. So if we scroll down, everything looks pretty good. And then we see here, here are some times uh, that are actually showing up that are blue. These are the over 20 minutes right there. Um, so for this particular stage, uh, you know, that would be something that we would go back and check. And, uh, you know, this uh, 30 minutes right here, that was, that was real. Uh, but then what's the story uh, with this hour and two minutes? Uh, it turns out that that was actually what happened there, too. Uh, some people got very stuck, uh, but did finish the rally. So uh, a good quick view to make sure that some of your stage times are reasonable. Unknown race numbers. This is uh, to look at uh, if you have anything unusual in the log. So it's a, it's a two-part operation here. So this one is saying that we have the number 700 showing up on our SS3 log of what happens. Now, for us, since we tell all our volunteers to use anything in the 700 region to do their practice data, this is pretty understandable. So it's safe to delete this. So what it does is if it detects that there is a number that it doesn't know, it will also then go ahead and tell you, hey, these are all the numbers that we are missing from this control. So maybe this will help you figure it out. So what a more common situation here is sometimes once you've cleaned up all the sample data is, for instance, you might have a 17 right here. If this was 17 and it listed that you were missing 175, you'd say, aha, well, I bet that 17 is actually 
the 175. And then you go, might go check a log or check a time card and be like, yep, that's the, that's the time that this was supposed to be a 175. And they just miskeyed it in. Uh, in this particular scenario, it's the same thing. We have uh, service be out. No one uh, had a time for service be out since this regroup was uh, canceled. So we just moved all the work was done in the regroup. So, and 799, some more test data here. So if you have some strange numbers, the best thing about this is it tells you what to go looking for. Um, so that can be a big help. So check in order. We have three ways of looking at this. You know, this is what happened during the day. So if we take a look, uh, so the graphic uh, by order, this is a list just of what did we have as, as people checked in. So as long as things are reasonable, we get these nice parallel lines. What we can see here is actually on this, this is the stage one start that uh, 101 passed 107 on stage and then correctly uh, checked back in at TC2 uh, and uh, you know, in position according to the modified FIA rules uh, and then passed them again. These are all motorcycles so they uh, you know they don't mind passing a lot of people. As we move down we see that the cars uh, starting here with number one uh, the cars tend much more to stay in line uh, when things are going smoothly. Um, so we can see here that you know if someone you know here they're dropping a, a lot and they're or they're dropping on a stage we can see that it's also very good for debugging what happened in the control who passed who who checked in front of who first uh, so the interesting thing here is there's no differentiation as far as the number of minutes between when these things happened uh, so here the the actual time between 176 the last bike and the first car was about half an hour, um, but everything is all, you know, bundled up. So this really is focuses on the order of what happened and is a great debugging tool to, to look at that, especially if there are any inquiries. So we can look at the same data and take it instead of just by order, graph it against the time of day. So this is all the same data, but it's by the clock. So we can see here's when all of the bikes started and then there's a large gap between the two groups. And then here's when the car started. So we can see that the car pack is moving along pretty smoothly. And then here, this SS1, there's a large gap, uh, about half an hour, um, in the middle of the pack. In this particular case, what happened is we had, uh, you know, a we had a rider go down and we had to roll in uh, some some medical crews to handle that. And so this is the gap that was formed by that. Then this group got to TC2 a little bit late, um, but then they started uh, at time control two, the second stage, the whole group got put back together. This report is very useful for going back at the end of the rally. And when you're discussing with the stewards, what actually happened in certain places, uh, where were the two groups, you know, what what happened? Why was this person late? Did they get a penalty that is that is real? Um, were there other people involved? So th this lets you, you know, take a look at uh, the rally of the whole to see what kind of things are going on. And this piece right here is a perfect example of, ah, uh, yes, we had the two fields, but they got split by then, and we put them back by by this time. So a uh, very useful report for that. And. Uh, then this last one, which does it by text, is uh, a little bit of an eye blaster. But what it does is it just, in the first column, it decides what color uh, the text everyone's going to have. So some people are bold, some people are red. And then it just says it's going to carry those through. So here we see 104, I'm sorry, 107 has, is down here. So this is really for looking in detail at some particular incident, uh, incident that you're trying to cover. Um, and it is... Uh, it, it's difficult to follow, but it has the most detail as far as, as, as the numbers. Under the, uh, the math, sometimes what we want to do is take a look at uh, a particular control. So let's just say uh, that we do uh, this one here. And so what we have is it's, we're, we're being shown three controls right here. So here's TC1S, the start. This is what we're looking at right here. And we can move back and forth uh, to other different 
uh, control. So if we're looking at the finish now, if we if we actually place this uh, right on a stage finish, uh, we have the start and uh, and the next control in front of them, and these are the types. So the order right here that we see of these numbers, this is the order that we're, that we're looking at in our in our reference control. So even if the order uh, was switched in one of these other things, if someone got passed on stage or you know swapped around on transit, uh, everyone is staying in the order of the reference control. And then what we have over here is we have three sections where all of the math between these three is being done for us. So we can see that uh, this is the TC1S to SS1. So this is TC1S to SS1 start to finish. This is our stage time, seven minutes and 59 seconds. This last one, TC1S to TC2, that's from the stage start to the next control. This is our transit uh, following. So we can see that everyone is uh, doing really well here. They're all on 31s, that's the assigned transit. We also have the finish time of the stage to TC2. So this is the time from when they finished to when they got to this next control. So it's really just these three in order. Uh, if we're lined up on a stage finish as our reference, then this is going to give us our stage time and our following transit time. But we can move through uh, and it'll really tell us you know, the difference between any columns that we want. And this is handy for looking at a whole section of, uh, of, of math for many people. So if you really want to find out uh, you know, how long did everybody take to get from that service over to the, to the next stage, uh, this is a good report. Uh, to do that because you can see ah everyone made it within this you know 32 minutes and that looks very reasonable so uh, so that works so that is the uh, the piece there that is the three control deltas and the final piece uh, is the forensic lookup map so what this does is for every piece of data that we have uh, we may want to do what we call a forensic lookup which is looking at the data that we have in the system uh, that we have here, and also the data that came from the uploads. So um, if we look at that, let's say we look at uh, the stage finish for stage four for car 13. So here's what we have is uh, car 13, uh, here's our control stage four finish, and we can jump right to those. So the official time at the control is this. This is the, the 140202, that's when they finished. Uh, and then we actually have the recorded millis at the control and then here's what we got from the uploads, 14.02 uh, with the 406 millis. Uh, in this rally, we aren't using the, uh, the milliseconds to score anything. Um, so for this, you know, everything matches up and that's fine. Uh, we sometimes may have a situation maybe at a, uh, at a start. Uh, these will be a little bit different. So here we have 12.54 was the official start with zero official millis, which makes sense for a start. So the, here's the intended time, uh, the 12.54.00. And then here is the time that they actually touched the button uh, for this start. So this was just after the other car left, the car that left uh, you know, when they were getting ready for the countdown. And boom, at 53.02 and 7.30, that's when they hit the button that said begin the countdown uh, for this next minute. So what this does is this uh, report is actually combining the detail from the uploads uh, with the detail that is official um, because you know you may have edited this you know the official time may have been you know something wrong with a time card or whatever uh, and that'll pull out this piece of data uh, but you'll still be able to see this reference data uh, here from the rest so that's what this uh, forensic lookup map does is lets you analyze the uploaded data which has all of the the milliseconds of every button press and the official data, which is what's being used to generate the results. So investigation tools, uh, one of the handiest is still gonna be up here, this map of times entered, which is gonna give you all of, uh, all of those pieces there. You'll use that a lot. And these uh, suspicious control times uh, is probably a really good one. Uh, and again, it's, you're gonna get used to checking these sort of as the day goes by um, because you never know what you'll find, and then that'll be something you'll need to go investigate. You may need to uh, call some people, uh, you know, get a time card, uh, text it to you, get a picture of it, or 
uh, ask for logs from a particular place. Uh, you're not sure what mysteries you're going to find uh, looking in here. Um, the, the rest of, of this is very much organized around things are working properly. However, uh, we know that uh, generally uh, the rally is just a controlled, uh, barely controlled uh, source of chaos. And whatever is going on in the forest is usually going to take us a little while to find out. So these investigation tools will help you do that.